how you can install Bazu agent on your Windows server, Windows machine, Windows endpoint using PowerShell. You have to log in your GUI of Bazu server. You can simply install Wazoo agent in two or three steps. Okay. Simply you have to go to the main menu, click on agents. I have installed an agent. Uh, uh, right now I am going to install a new agent simply you have to click on deploy new new agent you have to select the operating system windows windows 7 plus 1 choose the architecture default architecture what is the server address because this is my distributed scenario of Wazoo the IP address of my Wazoo indexer Wazoo manager is this and Wazoo dashboard IP is this what I uh, you what you are going to name this agent I am going to name this agent my machine any group group you want to add default Now what is this? The installation command just compiled. You just have to copy this command. Go to your search bar of the host machine. Search for PowerShell. Click on the PowerShell run as an administrator. Sir, yes paste that command and press enter it will take a while to install now the next step is what start this service on the agent the wazu service was started successfully now we will go to our agents Before that, only one was agent was shown here. Now the count goes up to two. Now it comes to the disconnected agents from never connected agents. In the meanwhile, it will go to the active agents that's it the active agent is this you can see you can select the agent it will take some time to send the log that's how you can simply install the Wazoo agent using PowerShell. How you can create the GUI user for your multiple users. How you can create internal users in your Wazoo server. So let's just move towards the configuration and the way how you can create new users in the Wazoo server. The first step you have to log in your Wazoo GUI.
the wazugui has successfully logged in the next step you have to follow is to click on this menu icon and goes down drop down click on this security button this is the window where you can create new user assign rules whatever you like to do click on this internal user button currently i am logged in with my admin user default and which have backend roles admin you simply have to click on this create internal user or you can click any user and duplicate that user so currently i am going to create a new internal user you have to type the name for username and password the password must be tricky and not the easier one so i have created a, a difficult password because the instructions are pretty clear here password should be at least eight characters long and contain at least one super case, upper case letter one lower case letter one digit and one special character the username must contain from 2 to 50 characters valid characters are a to z a to z 0 to 9 underscore hyphen and unicode characters you can use all these instructions in your username you want to use so i have created a username and the password as well this is the tricky part what you have to do you have to assign the assigned role to this user you can see the roles from here these are the backend rules you are going to assign to your user right currently i am going to use my admin backend role you have to type this manually and click on this create button the user has been successfully created and uh, which ha which has backend role admin now we are going to log out my this admin user and see this admin user uh, the newly created user will work or not yeah the user has been working fine currently you if you want to change password for the user you can click on this uh, reset password button you can easily change your password from here you have to enter the current password and newly password and click on this reset button this is the one scenario you can create an internal user we are going to use another click on we are going to select an user and click on this action button and click on this duplicate we are going to name whatever we want to and just have to enter the password we if you want to change the name you can type here the admin role backend role already assigned now we are going to click on this create button now use the third one user I have created in front of you that was test copy and the password was the same enter that password and click on this login button and there you go you have successfully logged in with your newly created user this is how you can assign backend role to the newly created user if you want to assign any of the role to user you can open the default user from here and you can create the new role from here as well so if you want to assign any of this role you simply have to open that role and map the user and click on this map button and select any of the user this is how you can 
map the user map the roles to the user report read access this is how you can uh, assign multiple uh, roles and permission to user you, according to your requirement you can simply assign these roles to any of the user the way i have guided you hope you guide i hope you guys understood the scenario very well uh, creation of new user is very simple you have two ways you can create the user by simple button create internal user or you can create the user by this option as well you have other options available here you can delete the user from here edit the user from here and many more how you can create and configure dashboard in your wazoo so we are going to log in our wazoo gui Currently, I have one agent installed for the Wazoo server and it is disconnected. Let me just start the agent. Okay, here it is. I am going to start the agent then it will be appears to be active let's see yeah currently it's active right now you have to go to main menu first and see here the dashboard click on this and create your first dashboard so I am going to create the first dashboard I am going to use data table to display values okay we will select the wazoo alerts so in the matrices in the bucket we are going to select split table right and we're going to select column and next here you have to select the terms and select the field to add I am going to add first timestamp and select the order ascending and the size of table rows and columns and select the time and click on this update button okay if we select the rows This is how you can see the difference. Okay. Now we are going to add another value. We are going to use the host name or we can 
read the logs which values uh, we were needed and or we are going to visualize in our dashboard we will go to the security events and i am going to open the wazu and select the agent host and ascending and going to select the value for and name okay we are going to add another Comes the next field we are going to select as according to our requirement. I am going to select rule groups ascending twenty and group. You can see as soon as you will be adding the values the data will be more readable and more visualizable okay now we are going to select the time stamp and the values and you can see you can change the time filter from here and see the logs agent name what what is the group and what will be the time okay now we will add an other row and now we are going to select rule description from the ascendings description of the rule click on update button as soon as you will you will add the values and you will add the values in the buckets the data will be more realized and more readable now we are going to save this and name it as table monitoring save and return this is our dashboard for monitoring of agents according to our requirement let's check that our dashboard has been saved or not no it's just not saved okay we are going to click on the realize it just has been added in the visualization we have initially created the visualization if you want to create dashboard you have to edit add an existing dashboard we are going to select table monitoring and click on this save button and name this dashboard now the dashboard has been successfully created 
I have just mixed up the things. Initially, we have to create the visualizations. Then we have to add these visualization in in this dashboard. Let me create an other visualization. I am going to select pie chart for the Wazoo alerts and click on this split slice select terms timestamp ascending number of values you want to see and click on this and name the label for your data you can see you can create multiple type of dashboards using this visualization now i am going to select agent name ascending i need 20 values and name that see this is this is for the agent name and it's the timestamp got it now we add some descriptions ascending we need 20 values and name of this save it and now we are going to move our dashboard if we edit this dashboard and add something new we will click on this add button and select the pie chart and it, it has been successfully added you can set the position and location for your realization going to save as it is this is how you can create the visualizations in your wazoo server and dashboard in your wazoo server hope you guys like my videos and understood the configurations and the scenario very well if you have any query any issue during this configuration you can comment under my video show you how you can control or ignore the logs from the agent in detail you can say if you want to filter or minimize or control the logs that wazoo agent sent to wazoo server how you can do that simply log in to your wazoo server first i am going to install agent I'm going to install agent on windows what is the server address this is the server address agent name my whatever you want to name your agents in the server Simply you have to copy this command, open the PowerShell of the host, run it as an administrator, simply 
paste this command press enter it takes a while to get the wazoo agent installed the next command is to start the service okay the service has been started successfully you can also verify that the wazoo agent has been installed and the service is in the running state okay let's move to our dashboard so the wazoo agent has been installed successfully before this installation zero agent were shown in the total agents and uh, every status of this agent was zero and now total agent based to one and never connected agent also valued one soon it will move to active agents and now how you can see the agents uh, agents log simply you have to go to this security event on the main dashboard click on it it just got these logs it's the first time installation that's why it will send all the logs now what and how we can stop or minimize the number of logs that wazu agent sent to the wazu server okay in this topic i am going to cover one more thing if you want to minimize the log or you want to make customized log or you want to make readable short log of particular agent i am going to show you how you can do this you simply have to go to main menu click on this discover button i am going to select my agent by creating a filter i will make an other video of how you can create filters in the wazoo to read the logs for the particular agent or for the particular event whatever you can say you have to type the field agent name operator is the condition uh i am going to explain a little uh, what is this operator uh, for example i want to say case case is one agent if you want to see the logs for only single agent you will select is if you do not want to see any log of particular agent you will select is not if you want to see logs of multiple agents you will select one is one of is one of mean i if you install agent on five host or windows machine one of them is this is not one of them exist does not exist you will understand currently i have only two agents what is wazoo server and one is my machine click on this save button you can set the time interval from here as well now i am going to make this little more customized agent name this is the agent name now uh, description of the rules or the logs 
रूल आईडी कम द रूल आईडी नाउ द वन मोस्ट क्रिकेट क्रिटिकल इज द event id is the one we are going to add that event id in the agent configuration file that will control and minimize the number of logs okay event id is not the thing is any a uh, not an event id based log has been triggered yet so i'm going to show you how you can do that i simply have to go to the folder and click on ozek agent go to the configuration file maximize that configuration file this is the part where you have to enter that particular event id for the corresponding rule id now i am going to uh, explain little more about this this rule id is correspond or parallel to the event id if we want to control the logs from the windows based host or the agent you have to identify the event id for the particular rule and copy that event id in this tag if you want to add an other event id here you simply have to add space paste this syntax and add this event i add that event id over here and save this configuration file next step you have to do is what you have to restart the wazoo agent service that will do what that will do what the agent will stop sending that particular log to the window server the question is why we do this because we want to ignore unnecessary logs that we do not need in the in the wazu server the those logs were you utilizing excessive space okay that's the event id it's a pair this is the event id you have to every time add if i do not want to receive this log on my window wazu server because because it's not i must say it's not that much important i just want to monitor critical logs uh disaster base or high value or logs in that scenario what i will do i will add the email id for that particular log in my agent configuration file and i will save that configuration file after that i will restart the service of wazu agent that will stop sending logs to the wazu server 
it will save our space for the wazoo server how you can implement policies on your indexes or the indices in your wazoo server for this i am going to use the default instructions provided by the wazoo you can try simply wazoo index management in your browser and click on this wazoo index management here you have to follow these instructions if you are using wazoo with kibana elastic search right so i am going to access my wazoo server in the browser have to log in your gui account for the wazoo server The GUI team takes a bit time to get ready. You guys were familiar with this. It always took some time if uh, we have rebooted the Wazu server or restarted the Wazu server. If the server is uh, running 24 by 7 in your environment, then it will not take as much time it taking right now okay we are going to refresh it right from the menu main menu you will have to go to this index management first now if you want to create a new policy you have to go to the state management policy if you if you already running policies on your server you can go with this menu and here are the indices which has been created please make sure not to delete one of these indices right if we are going to delete the indices manually then we have to simply click any of the indice which we want to delete and click on this action button and you can see here the delete button and type this delete in it and click on this button and this is how you can delete the in indice manually if you want to implement policies on this and we are going to create a automatic policy we are going to use visual editor and this is the policy id we are going to name according to our memorization
now we are going to add the states we have to add an ism template that ism template will automatically apply the policy to indices created in the future okay we are going to click index pattern what will be the index pattern we are going to do this later now do this we are going to add some state 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 1 need to add action what the what type of action you want to add i am going to add the action here this is the first action if you want to add other now we are going to click on this shrink action and add the action save this state now check if the if we can create an ism pattern and a template click on this after the delete action we have two actions in this state okay we are going to edit this and add only one action it in it now add another state shrink it will run before the state 1 and this is the state 2 we are going to add, add the action and save this state now we have successfully created the first state is delete but it will run after this shrink state and click on this create button to create a policy okay now if we want to apply any policy we will search it and apply the policy this is how you can imply apply the policy and how you can create the policy first we will create the policy that the data will be shrinked and then it will be deleted and how we are going to that apply that policy on our indices you have to select the indices and click on the apply policy button and select the policy which one you want to apply and click on apply button this this is how you can create the policy in wazoo and apply these policies automatically to your indices why we do that we 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 does this to automatic delete our indices which get older and which get larger in in size 
this is how you can create the policies in Wazoo and how you can manage your indices what are the indices indices are the data which work which will be created or which were created while the Wazoo server is running either these are the statistics log either it's the monitoring log either these are the alerts log this is how you can manage your indices in your Wazoo server my topic is older but the scenario is the newer one today I am going to show you guide you how you can configure auto backup policies in your Wazoo server to store the data or backup the data so just move towards the configuration uh, you have to login your Wazoo GUI Wazoo server GUI Currently, I have only one agent registered and which is currently active. The events will be displayed here. I mean to show you that the logs uh, were monitoring through the Wazoo server. I have data store in my Wazoo server. So, the first step you have to go to the snapshot management for to create the backup policy you have first you have to create first a repository that will store these backups and and other thing you need to add you need to add which indices you want to on uh, backup like we have multiple indices statistics monitorings alerts these are the indices in which the uh, logs or the data will be stored for the wazoo agents so i am going to create the repository here we can add the share file system or we can select the uh, custom configuration so we are going to use the share file system we are going to name the repository weekly backup right and we are going to mount this folder at our drive available at the server at the Linux server not in this Wazoo GUI and click on this add button this is the error we have to add the location in the CLI in the Linux at our Linux machine at which the data will be stored let me show you okay we have to follow some steps uh, before creating or attaching the repository here we have to uh, define the location where this backup will be stored where this back, uh, repository will be created at our Linux machine so just SSH your Linux machine on which Wazoo server has been installed 
and you have these steps to follow you simply can create an a directory at this location so i have created uh, at this and you can check that the directory has been created or not successfully the directory has been created now you have to provide information uh, permission to this directory to our wazoo indexer user okay the permissions has been assigned now we have to add this folder in our this open search.yml file that this this location is uh, uh, identifiable and where this uh, repository and backups will be created in the future so you just have to follow these instructions and save this configuration file now you have to restart your wazoo indexer service on the linux machine so i have done these steps uh, the steps were very simple uh, before you are going to create auto backup policy or in your wazoo gui you have to create an uh, directory at your linux machine then you have to assign permission or give permission to this directory to our wazoo indexer user then you have to uh, mount or give in, give this path in this open search dot yaml configuration file then you have to restart your wazoo indexer service on your machine so i have done these steps as soon as uh, the wazoo server will be started yeah the service has been successfully started let's check the status yeah it's active and running now we are going to move to our GUI to to continue from the steps from where we have just started now we are going to create an repository or weekly backup right we are going to use the share location and we are going to add this location here click on this add button the repository has been created at this path on our linux machine on which this wazoo server has been uh, installed and configured now we are going to create an auto backup policy then we have to click on this snapshot policies and click on this create policy now name it weekly backup policy right if you want to add any message or any information you can add this in the description so we are going to name our policy i have named it weekly backup policy and added some description or you can say the messages you want to add and click on this drop down to select whether you want to add all if you add static that will take up take backup of all the indices available otherwise you can just uh, copy the name from here like i am going to show you and you have to paste it and add static with it it will take the backup available uh, backup of all available files you can select the static as well and if you want to add customize then i have guided you how you can take the backup and add the static it will take all the select the repository for snapshot the place area where the backup will be stored 
uh, I have only one repository that that has been auto selected and you can create the new repository from here as well now you have to select the snapshot frequency uh, you can select it on the daily uh, or you can select on weekly you have to you can set the time available here and select the day on which you want to take the backup and select the time zone from here so I am going to select currently on daily and I want to take the backup on 20 p.m. right now we are going to select retention policy period check and if you want to receive notification you can select the option available here when a snapshot has been created when a snapshot has been deleted and when the snapshot has been filled uh, if we want to check let me add time that I have to take the backup on this time and uh, where is our time zone the way I have guided you and click on this create policy button uh, the policy name must be in lower case so I am going to do the same let's see if we have removed the issue this is how you can create auto snapshot policy or auto backup policy in your Wazoo server that will be run and will be created and as soon as the backup will be taken that will be displayed here in the snapshot hope you guys understood the scenario and guidance very well uh, please like and subscribe my channel and with, uh, and share with your friends colleagues and students uh, you can comment any of your issue or you have any query you can comment under my video you can text me or you can email me all the information regarding contact available on my channel so how you can implement and how you can use that scenario for the wazoo the topic is old but a new scenario a new usage wazoo snapshot management policy wazoo backup and restore policies and how you can schedule and or how you can create policies for your backup and restore for the today scenario i am going to use a external drive or the folder windows base folder i am going to mount that folder to our wazoo machines and we will take backup and restore from that drive or the share folder so let's let's start with the configuration first we have to press our Wazoo master machine We have to check this dependency or package is installed or not. This is the document I have created for myself. I am implementing this scenario on the distributed and cluster base Wazoo. I have three nodes, one for master, one for worker and third for the dash dashboard. Indexer installed on the both of machine master and worker. Wazoo manager is also installed on both machine. File beat is also installed on master and worker node. Dashboard is only installed on the third machine which is dashboard okay what we are going to do next create directory and set 
the all configuration we are going to create a share folder I am going to create the folder name snapshot okay that is the next step share this folder so can be accessed by Linux server okay click on the properties go to the sharing share I have already created a username with Yahoo and I am going to give rights to this user for read and write and click on the share this is the address of this folder okay I am going to rename it folder as a okay so go to the advanced sharing share this folder okay sharing share this folder what is next then go to the permission option yes the permission option what is the next step click the all option below the allow for the user and then add advance okay find now let's find the user yes okay okay now we have assigned all the rights to this user yes i have done this done this now create the directory at the wazoo server machines first create the directory we are going to create a folder or the directory at the default mnt directory at our linux machines let's just copy this you can check as well that the directory has been created okay now access the worker machine you have to repeat or do these steps on the master and marker until now Now create the directory on the both Wazoo server. I have created. Now give the permission to Wazoo indexer on these directories. That's good. Now go to this configuration file. wait friends ok friends next we have to do this is add this directory to this configuration file address 
press control x and press y enter now do the same on the worker node is next now you have to restart the wazoo indexer service on your both nodes master and worker node wait for the service to restart on the master node then restart it on the worker node be careful with this That means our configuration is fine till now restarted on the worker node. Okay, the service of Wazo Indexer has been started successfully on the worker node as well. Now, what we have to do next, we have to mount that share folder on this directory we have created on our linux machine on the or you can say wazoo master machine and wazoo worker machine what will happen in this scenario every time we create the backup or we restore the backup that will be created first at the linux machine on this drive then it will automatically copy it to our share folder either it's a windows based or the linux based and for this purpose every time you have to check the you need this user id and group id How you can check you can run this command on the master machine and worker machine here you can see wazoo indexer the first one is uid and the second one is git which is same sometimes by default worker node as well yeah the same here so now what is the address for our share folder is this let's edit this meaning is same now copy this command and run this on the master node i have some error in my Let's reconf. I have to reconfirm this command. Wait. 
Hey guys, I uh, I am doing couple of mistake. Uh, using my share folder machine address rather than IP and the user I have created Yase I am using was indexer instead. You have to add the user of that folder who has all the access and the IP address of that device, host machine or the system or the server on which this folder has been created and the address where you want to map this share directory now df-h here you can see this folder has been mounted now we have to do the same thing on the worker node enter the password for the user and it will mount the directory see the directory has been mounted here as well now what is the next step create repository and take snapshot and restore now let's move towards our wazoo GUI here is the snapshot management because I have restarted the wazoo master project that's why it is faster now first step is here is we have to create the repository repository name I named it share folder that will be the address of share folder this is the address directory has been created now press add to create the repository and see new repository has been created done now you want to take snapshot click on the snapshots take snapshot snapshot name fab first anything you can What what in the what reports you want to take the backup or how long how short you want to take the backup you can select here wazoo statics takes monitoring if you want to take backup of all you just simply have to enter static it will take backup of all the files if you want to include the cluster state in that snapshot because I have cluster running here you can check this option you have to check this ignore unavailable indices click on the add we have got it in error wait okay I have the error in the name no spaces in you have to put in that backup name right now it is in the progress the backup is about to it has been taken successfully on this time now we uh, will go 
go to the share folder you can see the backup has been automatically copied to the share folder of the snapshot 2 you want to check backup on your Linux machine you can also see here the backup has been created successfully that's how you can take the backup of your Wazoo machine on your host machine as well as the share folder or the drive let's take an other example testing backup we'll select this you can see now neither any error pop up because I was making mistake in the name it has been also done successfully and other file has been created here this one is the first one two minutes ago and this is the second one if you want to restore you simply have to click any of the checkpoint or the backup click on the restore restore all indices in the snapshot add prefix to the it will add restore underscore to the file of which you have restored let's check the backup restore has been done successfully you can verify from here restore. yeah this is the restore in dice health green done this is how you can take back of of your wazoo machine data and how you can restore on the machine as well with some new configuration new topic of wazoo email alerts based on rule ids i think so you guys you are familiar with rule ids these are the rule ids listed over here so the email alert based on particular rule id if you don't want to receive bundle of uh, alerts or bundle of email alerts if you want to ignore or if you want to filter these alerts you can simply configure the email alerts based on the rule id if a particular rule ID will be hit the email alert sent to the particular email or you can send the email alert to more than one user or only a single user as well uh, hope you guys have watched my previous video how we can be able to configure SMTP server with authentication SMTP configuration of Wazoo email if you guys uh, did not watch the video I will paste the link of that previous video in this video description and you can you have to first watch that video then you can you have to watch this video uh, and you guys will not face any issue or the error what we are going to do here and the configuration in the OSEC config file we have we have done this configuration that we want to receive email notification we have to enable it from no to yes SMTP server localhost 
uh, I have configured my e this email to send the email and I have tested same with this email to receive the email alerts you can change any or you can paste any email address over here you want to receive the email alerts number of email alerts per hour we will increase this to 40 50 100 500 400 i have already told in my previous video and here what here is the configuration of low log alerts level then level of log you want to receive in your wazoo gui and the email alert level the level you want to receive the email alerts what we are going to do over here we will set the number of email alerts to 120 and email alert we will change it number of email alert level is 60 and we are going to remove the email to part from here because we want to receive the email alerts on the particular email and I will paste these links well in the description so you do you guys do not face any issues and what I am going to do uh, we are going to save this if you want to take these changes effect you have to restart the manager as well first we will select a particular rule we want to receive the email alert i have selected the wazu server restarted rule id 502 what you are going to do is uh, you have to go to the management part select the rules search over here the rule with the rule id 502 the built-in configuration file will be open and you can see the wazu server started from uh, here as well you have to open this file search for the manager start and we are not going to replace any rule configuration in the default built-in rule IDs because if you ever going to update your wazu server these all configuration will be gone what you are going to do if you want to write or make any kind of rule configurations you always have to write those rules in this local rule file if you 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 will update your wazu server this configuration will not be updated or removed. I am going to open this file and what we are going to do here and we have the group over here is OZ. You can write this new rule in this in this Part or you can write it in the separate part if you are going to write this rule in the same part you will add the OZ group name over here and this rule 
syntax down here if you want to write it separately what you are going to do is you just have to copy this paste over here and Ozip to down here with original and this templates. So what the next thing you have to do is you have to just end. and you are going to override this rule that's why you have to add one of the keywords and override required okay what we are we have done here we have chosen a rule from the group ozek which is the 502 rule and the match is manager started wazoo server started and we have overwrite this rule and we, we we want to receive the email for this rule and why we are doing uh, doing this over here because we have set the email alert level to 12 because if uh, we we are not going to do this we will receive many number of emails unnecessary emails if you do not want to configure the uh, configure or monitor these kind of alerts okay now the uh, rule creation part is done wait for a while until this message will be pop up now what we are going to do over here we we have to write something in this main ozic dot config file what we have to write over here we have to write this we want to receive email alerts and to what email we want to receive this email alert for which rule you want to receive this email alert i02 do not delay will not delay any in the If the settings and the start call is on here, set your manager and email alert to Okay. Now you can see we have only received the alert level 3 email alert of Wazoo server is Wazoo server started. Not any other email alert of any level 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 because we have uh, make these configuration set to email alert level to 12 
we uh, now we have to do what over here we for the rules we want to receive email alert just we have to put comma write the rule id for that alert and you will receive the alert email alert of that particular rule id which will be hit i got this scenario and the configuration very clearly you can ask me and if you have any question if you face any error or the issue you can uh, comment down the video please like and subscribe my channel for the upcoming new topic videos new scenario videos until for then guys you can see only the email alert we receive for the 502 rule id we have set it over here can add multiple email addresses over here you can add multiple email alerts part down there to receive the email alerts to more than multiple email ids as well thank you for watching until then guys goodbye hope you like this video